We are about to be joined by our welcoming party, Right Honourable Prime Minister Claire Akamanzi, CEO of the Rwandan Development Board, and Jonathan Worsley, the Chairman of Bench Events. Please be upstanding. Right Honourable Prime Minister, Honourable Ministers, esteemed delegates, ladies and gentlemen of the press, all protocol observed, welcome to the 2017 Africa Hotel Investment Forum in partnership with the Rwandan Development Board. Thank you for welcoming us to your beautiful country. It is a great honour to be welcoming the Right Honourable Prime Minister here today to officially open the 7th Annual Africa Hotel Investment Forum and Aviadev Conferences. With over 575 delegates here today from over 50 countries, 20 of which are African, and 35 sponsors in total, this remains the event, the place to do deals on the continent. Most of us have already been in, involved in many array of uh, sessions, participated in round table sessions, card swap exchanges, uh, and spectacular award ceremonies like last night. Congratulations to all the winners, by the way, especially Rwanda for winning the best African destination. And the reception. <laughs> and thank you to our hosts last night, City Blue, for a great reception. The excitement of doing business in Africa is palpable, and it underlines the sheer opportunity that we have here today to shape the future of the African hospitality industry. This session now marks the official opening of AHIF 2017, and I'd like to invite Claire Akamanzi, the CEO of the Rwandan Development Board, our partners and good friends, to formally welcome the Right Honourable Prime Minister to open this conference. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Jonathan Wesley, the Chairman of Bench Events, co-organizer of this event, Honourable Ministers, Captains of Industry, Distinguished Participants, good morning. Welcome to the 2017 Africa Hotel Investment Forum, which is co-hosted by Bench Events and the Government of Rwanda through the Rwanda Development Board. This forum was preceded yesterday by Aviadev, the unique event bringing together key players in the African aviation industry. Over the next three days, we'll have very in-depth discussions, presentations, B2B networking sessions to increase networking and business partnerships. Similarly, the World Travel Awards was hosted last evening at the Africa Gala Ceremony. Through online voting, over 64 deserving awards were presented to leading entities in Africa in several subsectors, two operators, hotels, car rentals, different products, including destination marketing companies, among many others. However, only one country received the award for Africa's leading destination. I'm sure by now you all know which country that is. Right, Honorable Prime Minister, that country was Rwanda. The Africa Leading Destination Award is a vote of confidence in the tireless efforts that the government of Rwanda, through the leadership visionary, visionary, the visionary leadership of His Excellency President Paul Kagame and the entire government, the people of Rwanda have invested consistently over the last two decades to make the tourism industry indeed our number one foreign exchange earner. Allow me to finish by sharing a few recent milestones and also opportunities for the future. First, the milestones. The Right Honourable Prime Minister, I'm pleased to share with the audience that tourism receipts in Rwanda have doubled since 2010, reaching $404 million in 2016. And this sector now contributes up to 7.6% to GDP, both directly and indirectly. Secondly, coming to Rwanda has never been made easier. All Africans today receive visas on arrival. There are several other countries that also receive visas on arrival. And those that must apply, applications through digital online systems are available and you can get your visa within 48 hours. 
Similarly, several airlines now fly to Rwanda. But let me just point out that our national carrier, Rwanda Air, today flies to over 23 destinations, the newest being in Europe, London, and Belgium, and soon we'll be welcoming new routes, uh, namely China and the US. As you can see, the government of Rwanda consistently invests in making it easier for anyone who wants to travel and come to Rwanda. Thirdly, hotel infrastructure in Rwanda keeps growing. We have new brands that were invested over the last years, the last few years. First, Bisate Lodge by Wilderness Safari. We also had Singita, a groundbreaking around the Volcanoes Park this year, and will open in 2019. We've had in the recent few years also new brands, Marriott, Radisson, Park Inn, Ubumwe, among many others in the country. To support this growth of hotel industry, the government of Rwanda also launched a pu public-private partnership recently to develop a much bigger new airport in Bujasera. All these, ladies and gentlemen, is a continuous effort to make it easier for the tourism growth to happen in the country. And of course, on the governance side, Rwanda continues to be ranked the safest country to travel in Rwanda by the World Economic Forum. Zero tolerance on corruption is something that Rwanda has been known for for many years and con continues to be a priority for the government of Rwanda. And to support all of this, we've also increased the products that we have to offer tourists. As some of you may be aware, we recently increased wildlife in the country. We introduced uh, rhinos, lions in the National Park of Akajara, and we continue to na name new ba baby gorillas that expand the gorilla habitat in the country. And now, ladies and gentlemen, going forward, in each of your parks, you will find a booklet that we've put for you to consider. It's called Investment Opportunities in Tourism for Rwanda. Please, if you're interested, look at that booklet. We have opportunities in Kivu Belt for eco resorts, heritage corridor, golf courses, and many other products that you might consider investing in Rwanda. We also have a few hotels that are looking for partners. If you're an investment or financial partner and you'd like to buy stake or buy property in Rwanda, we have a list of properties that are actually available for sale. And we are happy to broker that at the Rwanda Development Board. And now, to conclude, let me recommend two things. One, we invite all of you to join us in being part of the remarkable Rwanda. Secondly, I'd like to inform you that as a conference delegate in Rwanda, if you want to see the precious exclusive experience of the Rwanda gorillas, you get a 15% discount as a conference delegate. Now, if you haven't planned to do that, I'd like to assure you that a 15% discount on the cost of seeing gorilla permits is way much, way a much bigger saving than the cost of changing your ticket to go back to your country. So please consider that. <laughs> and on that note, it's my distinct honor and pleasure to invite our guest of honor, the Right Honorable Edward Njirine, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda, to make his remarks. You're welcome, sir. Good morning, Honorable Ministers, Chief Executive Officer RDB, Chief Executive Officer Bench Events, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On the behalf of the uh, Government of Rwanda, I am pleased to preside over the official opening of the African Hotel Investment Forum that is taking place here at the Kigali Convention Center. I wish to thank you, <clears throat> I wish to thank organizers of this forum for having chosen Rwanda as a venue. I would like to warmly welcome you all to Rwanda. To all of you, especially those who came from near and far, please feel at home. We really value your presence a lot. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the African hotel industry is one of the fastest growing sectors with an estimated contribution of 8% to African GD Africa's GDP, and it, and it is uh, projected to rise to 4.9% per year until 2025. For Africa to achieve this growth target, there is a need to put in place strategies that support investment in the tourism sector. In Rwanda, 
under the leadership of His Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, we have made significant progress in the tourism industry. This was mainly achieved through the development of tourism infrastructure, especially through expansion of Rwanda, Rwanda Air's routes and investment in a number of leading international hotel brands. As a result, more jobs were created, especially for youth and women. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this forum has come at the time when African countries are joining effort with various stakeholders to boost the hospitality sector. For Rwanda, it is being organized subsequent to the commitment by the government of Rwanda to implement a seven-year program, 2017-2024. In this program, as you may know, we target to double our tourism revenues from 800 million, uh, to 800 million by 2024, from 400 million. I therefore urge all participants to this forum to share experience and good practices and advise on how well can grow the tourism sector in Africa and the hotel industry in particular. In this forum, Rwanda is delighted to showcase some exciting new investment opportunities in the growing tourism sector. Officials from Rwanda Development Board are available to discuss further these opportunities. As I conclude, I wish to assure you, to assure all investors that invest, inv investing in Rwanda is very, very profitable. Rwanda is very secure, economically stable, and all our laws are business friendly. Our entire legal framework provides a conducive environment for business. As you may know, the recent 2017-2018 Global Competitiveness Report that was raised by the World Economic Forum put Rwanda on the second position in Africa. With these remarks, I want to thank once again the organizers and participants of the 2017 African Hotel Investment Forum for choosing Rwanda as, as hosts. I wish, I wish you fruitful deliberations. It is now with pleasure that I declare the 2017 African Hotel Investment Forum officially open. I thank you so much. Thank you.